your ritual, ceremonial, spiritual, and spell work needs. We've got all the tools to make your working extra. So make that prosperity ritual one that keeps on giving by visiting us at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis or visit us online at megasbooks.com. Have you ever met someone who not only can help you on a deep spiritual level, but also potentially change your life? Refined Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who travels the nation and lives right here in the Midwest. And she offers mediumship, mentorship, house and business parties, energy healing, palm readings, and so much more. Refined Divine has helped thousands and she can help you. Hi, this is Psychic Medium Deb. I cannot wait to hear from you. You can go to refinedivinepsychic.com. With a look at your AM 950 weather, I'm Patrick Lilia. Partly cloudy tonight with a low of 60, then Wednesday sunshine with a high of 79. Time is running out on the annual sale at Woodland Stoves and Fireplaces, finding a place for fire in your life since 1977. Check out the showroom at Franklin and Riverside in Minneapolis or visit woodlandstoves.com. Portions of the following program may be pre-recorded. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host, guest, random reptoid, or chupacabra may not necessarily reflect those of AM 950 Radio, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Now, it's time to step into the unknown. <laughs> There are things people experience but never talk about. A shadow moving in the corner, flickering of the lights, a disembodied voice. We invite you to talk with us, share your story, share your experience, because this isn't just your story. This is our story. This is Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. And this is Ghost Box Radio on AM 950, where every night we talk about the paranormal, ufology, Bigfoot, and so much more. My name is Greg Bach, and thank you very much for joining me tonight. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm just going to say, uh, tonight's about positivity, right? But I, I got to start with something that's just, I, I see in my mind here. I saw, I saw it today. Did any of you see this in the news today? Um, we're going to be doing some ghost stories. Uh, don't worry about that. We'll get there. Um, if you have something you want to add, put it into the comments. We'll talk about it. No problem there. But I saw today, hypothermal explosion leads to closure of parts of Yellowstone National Park. Now, uh, the Biscuit Bay is a, a basin area of Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming is closed following a hypothermal explosion Tuesday morning. Uh, park officials said, did you see this on the uh, like people posting on Facebook and stuff? Now, you might be wondering, like, well, well, Greg, what are you so worried about? I'm not really worried, but here's the thing that has been plaguing me personally for about 20 years, if not a little bit longer. How many of you ever heard of a super volcano? And a super volcano is, a, well, it's a volcano, right? We, we, we got that figured out. It's super. And uh, <laughs> what that means, it's, it's massive. It's it's pretty much all of Yellowstone, if not if not more. It's just the Yellowstone is basically on top of a, a volcano that is massive, so massive that it doesn't have it's not really a mountain. It's 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 a landmass. It's it's a flat landmass because it is so massive. And uh, I remember years and years and years ago, I watched a documentary about super volcanoes, and I was. Uh, I was mortified, quite frankly. You know, I, I've, I've lived a life of fear. Let's just be very honest here. Anyone, everyone ever see the documentary in the uh, mid 80s narrated by Orson Welles? And I think it was like the called The Man Who Could See Tomorrow. And it was all about Nostradamus. That's the first time I ever knew anything about Nostradamus. And I, uh, I watched this as a kid, which is really a great idea. And uh, he, you know, it, it got to the the Antichrist part of it and uh, that the uh, that the two great superpowers are going to war and destroy pretty much all the planet. And they kind of, you know, they, you know, to make things scary, they'll tell you it's like, oh, you know, that's that could be in the next you know 10 years or something, which takes us to the 90s, you know, and I'm just like, my gosh, you know, I, I, I'm taking it as fact, you know, as a 10 year old. I'm like, oh, my gosh. 
where were my parents, by the way, during all of this? Um, and uh, just, you know, so it was there, let alone the fact in 1983 was the film The Day After, which, you know, it's, it's all about what happens when uh, a, a nuclear explosion uh, bomb takes out a city. How do they live? How do they survive? So you got all that. We get through the 90s. Nostradamus, at least as far as the way that we have, uh, we have uh, read up on him at that time, uh, none of that happened. We lived in we lived in peace, and then we have. I see this documentary about the super volcano, and uh, the super volcano. Like I said, it's it's just a massive land mass that is a volcano, and uh, they they say that this volcano uh, erupts like once every I think like five hundred thousand years. Okay. So as usual, how these things work, the the volcano, the scientists believe that it's been about 500,000 years, of course, since the last super volcano erupted, um, which means we are ready, that we're primed for it. Now, obviously, it doesn't mean that it could be today or tomorrow. It could just be that, uh, you know, within an area of you know, like probably like 10, 20,000 years, you know, it could be something. But the point is, is whenever I see something happening over in Yellowstone of any kind, it kind of freaks me out a little bit. I, my immediate response is super volcano, super volcano, you know, and it's, uh, it's uh, very, uh, very uh, frightening, quite frankly. And uh, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if how many of you out there have heard of the super volcano or care I mean, obviously, we shouldn't live our life in fear, but I clearly do. I mean, if, once again, once we get into the 21st century, I have the super volcano now plaguing me. I have, you know, the Mayan calendar plaguing me. Uh, I wasn't so concerned about the Y2K stuff personally. I just figured, eh, whatever. I don't know. Very unusual for me, I must say. Uh, but uh, it was, <laughs> my gosh, you know, this, this, seeing this uh, explosion, once again, if you can, I know Reed Timmer has it on his page. Not that he took the video, but um, it was, uh, uh, he shared it to it. Once again, it's at the Biscuit Basin, which is about two miles northwest of Old Faithful, the Old Faithful geyser. Um, and it had just, just it's an explosion coming out of it. Um, it's just ridiculous. It's a hypothermal, hydrothermal, excuse me, explosion. They're violent and dramatic events resulting in rapid ejection of boiling water, steam, mud, and rock fragments. Okay, well, that's horrible. And uh, they say large hydrothermal explosions occur on average of every 700 years. And now there was also one uh, that uh, they experienced an explosion in 1989 at Pork Chop Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin. Uh, I like the name of pork chop guys or I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I feel like I'm a kindred spirit to it already. Um, but uh, it's once again, uh, it's an explosion similar to that of today also occurred in the biscuit basin on May 17th, 2009, um, which it's like, okay, well, we're, what's up with the 700 years stuff. So here we are and uh, we are, now dealing with, you know, we have this, you know, this hydrothermal explosion, right? Okay, well, let's get that out of the way. Once again, I'm going to go back to my pal, the supervolcano. And you're like, well, Greg, why are you so worried about the supervolcano? Because quite frankly, um, it, it's going to be basically the end of civilization if it, when it happens. And why that is, it's because um, when, when that explosion happens, like I said, a massive landmass, it's not like a mountain, it doesn't have like a top to it, it's going to blow out the top. It's going to explode basically the state of Montana. It's going gonna, it's gonna to erupt ash into the atmosphere of, of such size that it is, uh, you know, that first of all, it will it will immediately choke everybody in a multi-state area, kill them. That that that's that uh, ash will uh, then permeate 
around the country. And the, the stuff that uh, that that first ash that uh, is from the explosion will probably go out about as far as uh, to Minnesota and whatever the the amount is the other direction. So right away, that's that's a pretty bad day. Uh, from there, uh, you're going to have um, you, you're going to have it go around the Earth. It's going to block out the sun. And uh, we know what happened to our dear friends, the dinosaurs, when the sun was blocked out. So what also is horrible about this is that that ash, say that you survive, that ash is very heavy. And there's going to be a lot of it. So it's going to go onto your power lines, which will then take down your power lines. You can't drive your car out in it because it's going to get into your engine. It's going to suffocate your car and your car is not going to work anymore. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and then uh, basically um, from there, and when I say that this ash is going to fall, I don't mean to say that it's going to you know, fall for a day and then we go outside and make you know, ash angels. What, what's going to happen is that it's going to fall for months, if not years. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty big. Now, I feel like I need to say at this point, folks, because I'm talking with such urgency about it, it's not happening so if you're like tuning in and you're like, what is he talking about? And you're like looking on all the news sites, please. I don't mean to, uh, to scare anybody. I'm just thinking about that when I'm talking, like I'm sounding pretty serious about this. My God, I can see people are just like, if they're just tuning in, what's happening? Oh my God. You know? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's the, you know, so when I see anything happen out in Yellowstone immediately, my, my mind just goes to an area of, um, of, of well of pure destruction quite frankly i mean that's just kind of where i go like i said i have pretty much lived my life in fear from stuff i've seen on tv and uh you know i, I that's this is, i'm like the poster child for getting out and exercising and not watching tv all the time quite frankly because honestly uh i it is it, it can be like you know you know are we going to die from a nuclear explosion and just like because especially in the 80s I don't want to say it seemed like a foregone conclusion, but it was a pretty strong one. And that Cold War that was happening, that's still happening, is uh, something that, you know, really, you know, really was something that, you know, obviously was very prevalent. And for, you know, a brief period of, what, 10 years, it seemed like, well, we didn't have to worry about that. You know, it, it moved from and pretty much once uh, uh, Gorbachev was was kidnapped and Yeltsin came into power over in Russia. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that seemed at least the, at that point when the Soviet Union fell, then that seemed like that we were appeared to be in some kind of a peace. So let the natural disasters move in now and, and, and scare me. So yeah, that was, uh, that's really where, where it's at. Now I, I do have to say, it made me think, when, like I said, if you tuned in and you're hearing me talk about this super volcano as if it's happening, first of all, I apologize because it's it's not happening. OK, it's it's I'm just I'm just uh, talking about just the hydrothermal explosion at Yellowstone today. But uh, remind me back in the day when I my first job out of Brown Institute, when I went into broadcasting, I was at a station in Mankato called KEYC and it was a CBS affiliate and uh so one Sunday night they showed a uh they showed a film called like asteroid or meteor or some some crap like that and you can imagine what that was and it's uh basically it was a it was a film that that pretended to be live updates on uh basically on like a news program so it'd be like you know, people at a news desk going to reporters around the world, checking out this asteroid that's rapidly approaching the Earth. And at the very end of the epi of the film, the very end of the film, uh, it turns out that uh, they, they were able to blow up this meteor. And everyone's like, hooray, hooray. And then someone's like, oh, my gosh look on the radar and it's like a thousand more coming on or coming at earth. Uh, now keep in mind, first of all, it's a crappy film, but keep in mind that it had commercial breaks and between each commercial break, there was a disclaimer, like something along the lines of the following film is a fictitious 
uh, you know, portrayal of uh, some, you know, fictitious events, whatever, blah, blah, blah. This is not real. And uh, so, <laughs> and I shouldn't laugh. We get to the end of the film and, you know, the, like I said, the film ends with there's thousands of them and uh, the, the credits start rolling. And that was back in the day that you would squeeze the credits to one side and the news anchor would come on and then be like, coming up next on KYC, we're going to be talking about, you know, corn yield because it's out in the farm system. So I'm not making fun of them. That's literally what we would be talking about. And so that's how it ended. And while we're getting ready for the news, the phone rings in the, in the master control because um, I don't know if I was directing the news that night or just working on it. And I pick up the phone. I'm like, KYC. And uh, this, this, this woman is, is, is like, she just, it's just silent. And she's just like, what about the meteors? And I'm just like, what about the meteors? And she's like, it, 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 you guys cut away when there's like a thousand of them coming at us. And I, first of all, folks, I don't even know if I'm 21 yet at this point, but she probably heard in the other end, you know, so, you know, cause quite frankly, uh, it was like, are you kidding me? So I said, uh, that that's a film that, that wasn't real. And I'm not being rude to her about it. I'm not trying, you know, I'm not uh, being, being ridiculous. I'm just like, that was a film that, that wasn't real. She starts crying. She breaks down. She starts crying. And she's like, we're all in the basement hiding. And listen, I sometimes I'm, I mean, when it's just like, you're just like, come on, how can you have missed? First of all, if, if the earth, at least in 1994, if the earth is being attacked by asteroids, you are probably we're probably not going to cut away for commercial break and seeing you know at that point i've been that dog on taco bell yo care yo care taco bell it would have we wouldn't have done that maybe now we would because that's just kind of how things work on on these stations certainly back then though we would not have uh we would not have break broke away let alone the fact that every time there was a um uh, like I said, a disclaimer. And to me, the 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 cherry on the on top here would have been the fact that, yeah, okay, a thousand meteors are coming down to Earth. Why would we, you know, squish it? And then our our anchor would be on saying corn yields today are at but you know some so percent, and we'll be talking about that in the in the newscast. It's hard. I understand that. She, you know, it's it's sad when some when people get scared about that. But honestly, I don't. What I don't understand is uh, how on earth you could uh, how how on earth you could take that and and take it as anything real. Uh, Fleetwood Paranormal, you have a very good point. War of the Worlds broadcast. Look what it did. People are fragile. I will I will give you this though. In my opinion, is that that there was no commercial breaks to it. Um, there was no disclaimer. I, I don't recall if there was a disclaimer. I wasn't alive back then, but we've all, obviously a lot of us heard that. I don't even know if there was really a disclaimer. Was there, it was a totally different beast. This, this set people up um, to understand, but you know, it just goes to show what people don't hear and what they don't pay attention to. And we all have done it in our own way, but it was really interesting. So, once again, if I made you all feel like that there's a super volcano erupting, I, I really don't uh, mean to do that. <laughs> but at least please don't call me and tell me that you're hiding in the basement because I, you know, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to react to that. That's all I'm going to say. Why don't we go ahead and do this? Why don't we go ahead and take our first break? When we come back, why don't we talk about some ghost stories? Let's see what's on your mind. Let's just kind of see how the night rolls out. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Greg Bakken here. I love historic tours of Minneapolis and seeing everything it has to offer. But if you know me, I like to include a little spooky in my tours, which is why I found the perfect combination. Minneapolis Trolley Tours does this amazing candlelight ghost tour that you have to check out. It's an extremely immersive experience. 
It's a trolley trip that starts out at a haunted mansion, traveling around Minneapolis locations exposing ghost stories that the public and business owners would rather left untold. Then a tour of the aforementioned haunted mansion where ghosts of past residents from the 1800s reside, plus a lot of surprises to discover. Next, experience Gertrude's after hours. Did I mention Gertrude is the mansion's most famous ghost? Maybe she'll show up. And you finish up the tour at Gertrude's Lounge in the haunted basement of the mansion with refreshments and Q&A. The trolleys are climate controlled and the mansion is restored to perfection. Check out MinneapolisTrolleyTours.com for more information. Have you ever met someone who not only can help you on a deep spiritual level, but also potentially change your life? Refined Divine is an extremely gifted psychic medium who travels the nation and lives right here in the Midwest. And she offers mediumship, mentorship, house and business parties, energy healing, palm readings, and so much more. Refined Divine has helped thousands, and she can help you. Hi, this is Psychic Medium Deb. I cannot wait to hear from you. You can go to refinedivinepsychic.com. What you wear is important. It should be fun, creative, and expressive of your own personality. At Grady Gear Company, we believe that clothing is more than just fabric and threads. It's a form of self-expression and a way to stand out from the crowd. Grady Gear is more than just a clothing brand. We're a community. We're here to inspire and motivate you to embrace your true self. We are a locally owned small business who do custom clothing orders too. Find us at GradyGearCompany.com. Greg Bakken here. I've told you about the out-of-the-world roast beef sandwiches at Maverick's Real Roast Beef, but I haven't told you about their Philly steak sandwiches, turkey bacon avocado sandwich, BLT, crispy chicken, fish sandwiches, brisket, or pulled pork. Okay, you get the idea. They make a lot of delicious food to the same standard as their famous roast beef sandwiches, and now I'm starving. I'm going to go to Maverick's Real Roast Beef off Lexington and Roseville, and you need to go too. Check out their menu at maverick'sbeef.com. Reach your highest level of consciousness and well-being with MetamorphosisConnections.com. MetamorphosisConnections.com is an online directory of the best holistic and metaphysical practitioners to help you make your most informed choices. You can search MetamorphosisConnections.com for classes, events, wellness and life coaches, plus metaphysical products and shops. You can also search for a wide array of healers from all modalities, including EFT, sound healing, energy healing, light therapy, ancestral healing, shamanic healing, reflexology, past life regressions, hypnotherapy, yoga, and more. And if you're not sure where to start, the search feature on metamorphosisconnections.com is tailored to help both those who know what they are looking for and those who are just starting. Come explore the possibilities for your higher self by visiting metamorphosisconnections.com. Their experienced practitioners can guide both beginners and those that are already on their spiritual journey. That's metamorphosisconnection.com, your link to direct you on your spiritual transformation. This Wednesday on Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken, tune in for one-question readings with the highly acclaimed psychic medium, Refined Divine, who can answer questions about love, life, and connecting with past loved ones. Get a potentially life-changing reading by calling. I can answer the question I've had all my life. Delve into the exceptional talents of Refined Divine at RefineDivine.com and experience her live Wednesday at 10 p.m. for Psychic Medium Refined Divine on Ghost Box Radio. You know, and I'd just like to take a moment to welcome a new sponsor, a Gritty Gear Company, uh, to uh, Ghost Box Radio and the AM 950. Uh, basically, if you heard the commercial, what they do is they have a wonderful line of clothing and uh, you know, they, they, they create their own designs. They make these really fun and, and cool pieces to wear that are also super comfortable. But also uh, what they do is a lot of uh, they do a lot of customizable stuff. They, they did it for us for uh, for AM 950 when we did Pride. And uh, honestly, the quality of the shirts alone were fantastic uh they the, the the quality of the print was incredible it was it was also really fun to see uh uh nicole over at gritty gear she uh, took video of uh printing our logo on the shirts and which was really just kind of fun to watch and she posted that and it was really neat to see and uh just uh we've had since then 
uh, Adam can attest to it because he's worn the shirt and he's gotten uh, people who are not wasn't at Pride, wasn't anywhere. Just the people were just like, that's really nice looking. That's a really good looking shirt. And uh, they they worked with us to figure out uh, what kind of sizes to get, uh, how to, uh, uh, you know, order and everything else. And really was uh, just really cool uh, to be able to uh, have a partner like that. And they're local. So please uh, consider checking them out. They're going to have a sale coming up here soon as well. Uh, go to grittygearcompany.com and check it out. It was really cool. We are going to, I'm done with the first segment of fear mongering. Okay. We got that out of the way for today, though. I didn't get to the point of talking about how Delta is still suffering. And they, I, you know, I think it's deeper than the outage that it tech outage from last Friday, but they're still, they're still uh, struggling to get people on planes um, it's, it seems like a pretty big mess. Um, all that, all that had, uh, come from CrowdStrike. Uh, remember that we talked about that last Friday. So yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, that's another day of talking about doom and gloom, you know, and, and I still stand by, it. you know, I think that, you know, the question is, are we, are we putting too many eggs in one basket? I mean, that it, it how is that possible? This seems like a lame science fiction film that, you know, it's like, Oh, we we hit the one company that handles all this stuff for the United States, and we took it down. No one took it down. I understand that, but my point is, it's like having that one entity that has affected so many things, from you know, obviously the airlines to FedEx, UPS to medical, um, nine one one. I mean, all of that stuff is is pretty ridiculous. And like I said, it just seems like a very bad uh, sci fi film right now and hopefully we, we get this taken care of but you know it's like you know <clears throat> it's 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 kind of scary i think you know i think it's you know just like we're it, it it seems like that and it seems like that people get away with it like there's there's no like well let's now we now we ran into this let's let's make it better it's like no 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 one seems to be wanting to do that so anyway ghosts at least you know at least we could talk about paranormal and that's always fun because uh, it's it's very cool and uh, you know it doesn't always be scary and and that's kind of what I wanted to talk a little bit tonight about is that you know I think uh, you know I think about you know your loved ones who've reached out to you for those of you who have uh, had been uh, I don't say lucky because I think we all get it we just don't always receive the messages but we've been able to receive when a loved one comes through or something and uh, it's there there's something pretty amazing about it and it's something beautiful about it as well i remember um i remember years ago uh, my my dad passed away in 2015 and uh that you know just like wow you know this is the first parent to go and it's you know i i think a lot of us would be able to agree if you've lost your parents when as soon as you lost this lose the second one in a way this feels like that's when i really feel like i'm an adult because i'm pretty much alone um now i know a lot of people have families and stuff but i am very much alone in a lot of ways in that situation um and that's that's i mean i'm gonna be honest that's my own that's my own design that's you know you kind of create your world around you so i'm not trying to be you know look for pity or that no one's wanted to uh to in include me or anything it's it's been kind of you know some people are just kind of loners sometimes and then and that's probably me but i i veer off topic here that uh there was a um that I was driving with a, a person I used to investigate with her name's Nicole. And we were, we were working on this web series. I mentioned the web series before and we went out to strawberry point, Iowa. And uh, when we left and I was just driving my old uh, Ford fusion, when we left, it was fine in Minnesota, but the further we got down in Iowa, it started to snow. It started to get worse and worse. And when we knew that uh when we when we read the weather reports that we're that that area is probably going to get around um maybe two inches maybe three which three is kind of annoying but you know it's fine but driving and i'm i'm driving and i'm driving and suddenly um i lose control of my car it's a two-way highway. 
I go into the other lane and I go off the road into a ditch. Luckily, there wasn't anyone coming towards towards us. And, uh, you know, me being, you know, Mr. Carr, um, I'm trying to get us out of this ditch. It's not like heavy snow. It's still pretty like grassy. Uh, it's just that the it, it was wet and it was dangerous and it was icy. Um, and so I, I'm like in the car trying to get up this kind of what seemed to me a steep kind of hill. We're kind of in a, it was actually a, 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 uh, I think if I remember right, it was like a kind of a church grounds, like there's a church and we were in the, the lawn area of it that, you know, we got off the road and I'm trying to get out of there, you know, like, you know, just trying to get out of there and no luck, no luck whatsoever. And Nicole's just like, can, can I have a try? I'm like, yeah, sure. Go for it. She gets in the car, you know, just, just drives it up the hill. I, I don't know how. I mean, clearly she's a better driver than I am, but that's neither here nor there. So much so, actually, that I'm like, you know what? I am pretty crappy in winter driving. I am very crappy in winter driving. Um, could you just drive the rest of the way? Which she did. She did amazingly. And uh, she uh, uh, she just was you know, she, she just was able to drive in this blizzard because, okay, it turned into a blizzard and this two inches of snow turned into 11 and it took a long time. And it seemed like at that point when she was driving, I think every semi truck on earth was driving at the same time in the same route uh, because it, you don't notice semi trucks until you're driving in in blizzards I, I you know i really do believe that nothing against semi-truck drivers please don't think so but it is tough to drive in blizzards around truck drivers because they they are they're, they don't really they don't need to slow down as much uh they sometimes they should but they their their payload makes it so they they are much more stable than a ford fusion and so but nicole did an amazing job be much better than i ever could quite frankly I am horrible at winter driving, even with my four four wheel drive uh, SUV uh, that I have. It's still horrible. Uh, so we get to where we need to go. We get our hotel rooms because we need to get. We didn't make it to Strawberry Point because uh, we had to. Uh, we had to get. Um, we we had to stop. It was enough. We couldn't handle it anymore. We were probably about 15 miles away from Strawberry Point. We could not go any further. It was enough. I mean, that's that's just like you you have to think like, my gosh, you just you couldn't really go 15 miles further. Absolutely not. It was enough. Was enough. And Nicole did amazing. And so we we uh, we got hotel rooms and uh, I went to bed and I dreamt of being in my hotel room and, and my dad was in there and uh, he just was like, just staring at me and just kind of looking at me. And I, I really don't understand what that was. And so the next night, uh, the purpose of us being at strawberry point is, and I may have mentioned before uh, a year or so beforehand, I went there with uh, my friend Freddie and we found somebody there who she just didn't think that we could handle being in her super haunted house. That's a long story. I'm not going to get into that right now. And we did. And it was one of the most incredible investigations I've ever done. It's an old farmhouse from like the early uh, 20th century uh, that had been in the family for generations. And it was, it was truly uh, some magical uh recordings and and experiences so we went back there to do this uh to do this uh uh this web series and we get to uh we so the next day we get to them and we're we're recording and stuff and we have flashlights set up and we have a novelist set up. We're not using Spirit Box. Once again, I don't need to explain what a flashlight is, but I will explain that you can you can set a flashlight so that it can turn on and off by small movements. And we believe that we can have Spirit talk to us that way. Other people will say that, oh, well, that's just like a rubber O-ring inside the flashlight heating up, and that's why it turns the lights back on and off. If, when it's when it's answering questions so clearly and turning on exactly when you ask them to turn on, 
I, I don't I don't agree. But, you know, everyone has the right to agree whatever they want to. But we had flashlights on. They were answering us. And uh, so we also had the Ovilus, which is that device that has a screen on it that we believe spirits take words from the uh, from from a database in in the device so that uh, they can tell us what they want to tell us. Sometimes it's not always that clear. Sometimes I think there's a lot of false positives, but when it works, it works really well. So we're doing our thing in this upper part of the house, this old house. Um, this house also had a Bible from the 1400s in it. I kid you not. And we were in this back room and uh, we had uh, the ovelis then says nickel. And uh, someone says to me, because uh, we had uh, my myself, Shannon, her husband, and obviously Nicole with me. And Shannon's like, my God, Nicole, that's Nicole. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, don't don't start taking this stuff and trying to create, you know, your own narrative from it. I, I don't I don't believe any of that at all. And then the next word was bacon. And uh, so bacon, obviously, first of all, is what, a, you know, Bakken being my last name, it's pronounced bacon accidentally quite a bit. So I'm just like, okay. And so nickel and bacon, and where I'm going with this is like, if a spirit knows you, our names may not be in that database, but they might try to find something that's close that gets our attention. Okay. So suddenly I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay. So there we are. So we, once again, we also had these flashlights and I am never one. I, I'm much better at it now, but I'm never one to be like, you know, is this my dad? You know, turn on the flashlight. If it's my dad, you know, I, as, I was more like, is there somebody in here that uh, knows one of us and the flashlight turns on and it turns off. Okay, great. Do you, does it know Shannon? Does this person know Shannon? doesn't go on does it know uh, her husband it doesn't go on does it know nicole it doesn't go on and i'm just like dad is this you and the flashlight just turns on and it stays on and everyone's room's going oh my god and they're like shaking me and so i'm like what are you doing uh <laughs> Like, leave me alone. Uh, but uh, so it's like, okay, wow. Then it got weird. Um, then it got kind of strange because then uh, the uh, the smell of Stetson cologne came through very strong in the room. It got cold. My dad used to wear Stetson on occasion. He wasn't a big cologne wearer, but if he, because uh, mom bought him Stetson, like if they went out like to something really special, like a band concert that we're at or something, so that came through. It got cold. And then Shannon is just like starts freaking out. She's like, I'm hearing music. I'm hearing music. Anyone else hear music? And you stop and you're like, where is that music coming from? And it's like a almost like a polka. And it's like, what is happening here? And uh we just we just let it ride, but it and it lasted for maybe a minute or something. But it was, you know, I, I do believe that was that was dad reaching out to me to uh, to uh, to kind of make some kind of communication. And I remember asking, uh, actually, with the flashlight going on and off, I'm like, Dad, did you did you stop us from rolling yesterday? Because remember, I, I ran off roll off the the road and I felt like I should have rolled, actually. It's like, Dad, did you stop us from rolling? And the flashlight went back on. Like, wow. Uh, around that time, if I'm not mistaken, um, my sister had a dream of Dad. And it was, I think, if I remember the dream correctly, he either he didn't have one of his teeth, he looked at her, didn't have one of his teeth, or one of his teeth fell out in the dream. And she got up the next morning and she's getting ready for work. And one of her teeth fell out, just popped out. Crazy stuff, isn't it?
what do you guys think? You guys like want want more of this? Why don't we go ahead and uh, do this? Let's take a break. When we come back, I, we got some more stories. We could share whatever else. If there's something on your mind, put it into the comments. We're having a fun time. I'm enjoying it. I don't know if you are, but I always enjoy talking. I haven't thought about this stuff in a long time. You're listening to Ghost Box Radio on AM 950. Greg Bakken here. I love historic tours of Minneapolis and seeing everything it has to offer. But if you know me, I like to include a little spooky in my tours, which is why I found the perfect combination. Minneapolis Trolley Tours does this amazing candlelight ghost tour that you have to check out. It's an extremely immersive experience. It's a trolley trip that starts out at a haunted mansion, traveling around Minneapolis locations exposing ghost stories that the public and business owners would rather left untold. Then a tour of the aforementioned haunted mansion where ghosts of past residents from the 1800s reside, plus a lot of surprises to discover. Next, experience Gertrude's After Hours. Did I mention Gertrude is the mansion's most famous ghost? Maybe she'll show up. And you finish up the tour at Gertrude's Lounge in the haunted basement of the mansion with refreshments and Q&A. The trolleys are climate controlled and the mansion is restored to perfection. Check out MinneapolisTrolleyTours.com for more information. Greg Bakken here. Like you, I love good, fresh, delicious food. So I want to tell you about this treasure in Roseville called Maverick's Real Roast Beef. Maverick's has the best roast beef sandwiches I've ever had. Made fresh every order. Add fries or onion rings dropped in the fryer when ordered, and you have a winning combination. Maverick's Real Roast Beef has a lot more than roast beef, so check out their website, maverick'sbeef.com, or check out their restaurant on Lexington in Roseville. We know you value buying local, especially when it comes to your magical supplies. So if you're looking for grimoires, decks, jewelry, candles, or herbs that are locally sourced, then come on down to Megas Books and Herbs. Curated for your ritual, ceremonial, spiritual, and spell work needs, we've got all the tools to make your working extra. So make that prosperity ritual one that keeps on giving by visiting us at 1848 Central Avenue Northeast in Minneapolis or visit us online at megasbooks.com. What you wear is important. It should be fun, creative, and expressive of your own personality. At Grady Gear Company, we believe that clothing is more than just fabric and threads. It's a form of self-expression and a way to stand out from the crowd. Grady Gear is more than just a clothing brand. We're a community. We're here to inspire and motivate you to embrace your true self. We are a locally owned small business who do custom clothing orders too. Find us at GradyGearCompany.com. This Wednesday on Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken, tune in for one-question readings with the highly acclaimed psychic medium, Refined Divine, who can answer questions about love, life, and connecting with past loved ones. Get a potentially life-changing reading by calling. I can answer the question I've had all my life. Delve into the exceptional talents of Refined Divine at RefineDivine.com and experience her live Wednesday at 10 p.m. for Psychic Medium Refined Divine on Ghost Box Radio. And join me tomorrow on Ghost Box Radio with Greg Bakken. As you just heard, we're going to have Psychic Medium Refined Divine on to do one question readings. Don't forget, she will uh, be able to connect with your loved ones that have passed. Uh, she is, it's been so much fun to have her on the program. And I, I think even fun is the wrong word because she has been able to help so many people. And a number of you have taken her class now. Uh, and uh, done some of her retreats. So uh, we're going to have her back on tomorrow. It's it's always good. I had the pleasure, uh, so did Adam, this past weekend. On Saturday, she was in town, as, as we had mentioned, and uh, we caught up with her and Dave uh, after their event on Saturday, and we all uh, grabbed some dinner, and, we, and uh, with uh, her folks as well, the people that uh, work with her, and uh, we just we just laughed for a few hours. That's really all that that was. It was so much fun. It was so cool uh, to be able to uh, uh, take part in that. And we 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 ate well. That <laughs> that is for sure. So and thank you for that, Deb. Uh, but it was it was uh, it was great. And uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow when uh, we do the one question readings with her. It's it's going to be fantastic. Um, so, uh, we're talking about, uh, some of the stories and, you know, some of you here have, uh, 
been very kind. Uh, Stacy says that uh, I like your stories. I really appreciate that. Carol says that uh, wonderful stories. Love them all. It's so special. Great show once again. Uh, when loved ones reach out to us. Uh, yes, more stories, please. Thank you. Uh, Fleetwood Paranormal says my brother deceased grabbed my arm with his ice cold hand to let me know it was him inside inside family joke my mom yelled my name through the phone my parents died a month apart wow i you know that's that's just it some of the stuff you 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 just can't you can't fathom i mean it's so amazing and so amazing what happens when uh you uh uh have those those beautiful moments and i remember uh when my when my dad had died and at the funeral my friend roger said to me I had a phone call or I had, no, I'm sorry. I had a dream where my mom called and his mom had passed uh, some time ago. And he's like, I, and we just, we just sat and talked and he just looked at me. He goes, I, I don't believe that was a dream, which I would agree with. I would agree with him. I'd agree with him 100%. And I bring that up also because about a week ago I had a dream and within the dream, I ended up calling my mom. And it was just like, you know, and, and heard her voice and everything else. And, uh, you know, those are those are precious moments. Um, I remember having, uh, after my dad had passed, actually, I remember having very vivid dreams of him. And I think a lot of these dreams are actually coping mechanisms because um, for months and months, I would have dreams where I'd be in one part of a room and dad would be in another part of the room. I'd see him. I'd go to him and he'd leave the room and I'd go to the room he went to and he wasn't there. There'd be like a, a, a neighborhood where he'd, he'd walk around behind a house and I'd go behind the house. He wasn't there. It was months of that, months of that. And I don't think, I don't think that's paranormal. I think that that was for me a coping mechanism. But then one day, when uh, once again Nicole and I were we were taking part in an event at the Palmer House up in Sock uh, Center, Minnesota, and uh, we couldn't get into the Palmer House, so we were up at the hotel that's uh, just up on 94, and I can't remember what what it is. It's one of like it's 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 not like a Best Western, but it's something of that ilk. And I I swear that place is more haunted than the Palmer House. That place was off the charts. Anyway, uh, I had a dream. And that dream uh, was I was in the kitchen with my mom and dad. At that point, my mom hadn't passed, but my dad was there. The same kitchen that I grew up in. He was sitting in the same chair that he'd always sit in at the family at the table. My mom was probably off to the side making what uh, you would call a canooper, which would be a drink. Uh, my family loves a little bit of drink from time to time. I certainly have no, no exception for myself. And uh, look at my dad, and he's looking good. He doesn't look like the 78-year-old that passed away. He's looking like he's more in his 50s, which is creepy because there, there I am now. And uh, he, he, he just his hair is black because it was gray by the time he passed. He looked good. He looked really good. And we're talking, and I'm just like, hold on a second. You're, you're dead you shouldn't be here and he disappears and i said to him oh no you don't you come back here right now i i need to see you come back here right now he came back and i said you know i just want to let you know that i love you very much and i'm very angry that you're gone and the look on his face when i said this was a look that I, you know, if it's a dream, I don't think I can fabricate that in my mind. It was almost like of sheer surprise because we were never a family that we'd be like when we'd see each other. Oh, I love you. I love you. You know, none of that, you know, no hugs, no kisses. We're very standoffish, at least our, 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 you know, small circle, the, my mom, dad, my sister, and myself. So to, to actually say that to him, and for him to have that look on his face and then i kept saying i'm so angry that you're i'm so angry that you're gone i'm so angry that you're gone i'm so and then it woke me up i don't believe that that's a dream i believe that was him and i believe that he was coming to me in a way that i remember him best because that would have been roughly around the time of uh me being my my teenage years and upper teenage years 
based on the way he looked, if that makes sense. And I just, uh, you know, here we are. How, how are we nine years from the time he passed? He passed away in June 2nd, nine years ago. How are we, how did that time go so fast? And that dream, probably about a year after, it's still so vivid to me. And it's even weirder that I haven't got anything from my mom. And uh, maybe a couple things here and there. But the thing is, is that I don't by any stretch of the imagination think that she's ignoring me or that she's not there. Or, you know, some people have said to me when their their loved ones don't come through my spirit box that, oh, they don't love me. No, it's not that. There's there's all sorts of reasons why we're not picking up what's being laid down, if you get my drift. Uh, it kind of also reminds me, a few years after dad died, I was at my mom's house and my mom said to me, and I've never heard this before. My mom was saying to me, because we were actually going to, uh, shoot, shoot, that would have been, that would have been uh, just right after my dad died a few months later because uh, my sister's father-in-law passed away as well, just around that time. And we went to his funeral. And I went to my mom's first, and we we're going to drive over to uh, Hillside Cemetery, uh, where uh, my dad, my mom now, and and uh, Miles is buried. And I'm in the house with her, and she's just like talking to me about that she hears voices. She hears voices all the time in the house, and I'm like, "Where does this come from?" And uh, I just like, you know, and I'm sorry, I kind of like sure. I mean, what, what voices, where are you going to hear voices from? But I, you know, I just like, Oh, okay. Voices. Yay. Okay. And so we go to the funeral and we go out afterwards for some dinner and we get back and, um, normally what, what we do, what we normally do. And we're a family where TV's always on. So I, uh, I, I pick up the TV guide. I sit down at that, at the kitchen table, the same seat that dad was in, in my dream. And the TV's on, and I can hear people talking, and, I, and I'm and i looking at TV guy, and I look up at the TV. The TV is not on. Those voices are not from a TV. They are they're from somewhere else. They're not from a TV. There's nothing else on in the house. And my mom just looked at me. She goes, I told you. And that's what she was trying to say, that those are the voices she's hearing. It was a conversation. It was a conversation between two people very clear, not from outside. It actually sounded like almost all around. She had said originally from downstairs. Um, but uh, I think that uh, I, to me, it seemed like all around, but it you know, really depends on each of us, right? And what we're picking up and whatever else. <laughs> and it was kind of like, well, what are you going to do, Greg? You know, Mr. Paranormal Investigator, what are you going to go do? You're going to go you know you don't have your k2 where you can look like you're trying to do something what's that going to do it was it was really interesting but um and it wasn't scary it was like was this residual was this one of those things where you know not to get too weird but like you know you talk about timelines where they are kind of um merging a little bit so you're picking up something and maybe whoever is talking on the other end is hearing us i don't know but it was really interesting. And it was, you know, I just, all I said to her is like, you know, I, there's nothing to worry about with this. And she wasn't scared, but she's just like, I don't know what this is. But it was really interesting. And, you know, for all I know, it could have been mom and dad's voice from, you know, decades before. Because mom was still alive. She was the one that heard it. But, I mean, <clears throat> it could have been any of that stuff. I really don't know. But it was, uh, it was really fun. It was uh, uh, it was really cool. I, I like this. Uh, Fleetwood Paranormal says uh, I call it the nowhere sound. It's freaky. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's interesting. I like that. I like that because there are you know, and that's the thing. You you go on these investigations, you're gonna hear stuff that, by its absolute normalcy, actually is pretty frightening. Because you don't know where it's coming from. This is just a average conversation. And it's maybe not frightening is the right word, but it's like, where what is happening here? Uh so it's 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 truly 
uh, one of those strange situations. Um, there was another story I was going to mention, and I'm, I won't be able to get to it tonight because uh, it took place, and it's kind of a long one regarding, and I might have told some of this before, regarding uh, somebody who had passed, and we were getting them through the spirit box before they passed. And uh, it's it, we'll, we'll talk about that at some point. And uh, it, it's one of those things, too, that really shows that we are not in control whatsoever about uh, how we talk to spirits and uh, the timeline and what we think is the timeline because it changes so much, right? Because of everything that uh, we're not aware of, but we don't know. As much as we try not to think this way, that we, we always think of time as linear, but it's not. And it's uh, something that we are... Um, you know, that we're maybe not as prepared for as we think we are. So I, I find that interesting. Maybe maybe Friday we could talk about it. There was somebody who uh, sent me an email today, and, and they said, well, we'd like to talk about a situation we've had. And uh, if you want to do so over the air, uh, please do so on Friday. We'll do Casual Friday, but we'll also listen to anything that anyone else has uh, going on. Uh, because we just want to have open conversation if we can help or if, if anyone in the comments can help be happy to do so we're going to be back tomorrow we have a uh, psychic medium refined divine one question readings make sure you get your friends involved you call in as well this has uh, been fun hopefully you've gotten something out of it too we really appreciate you listening and uh, we'll be talking tomorrow take care everybody